Well, today is officially the day that we get to talk about all of the products that I've recently hauled, either in a Sephora haul or in my luxury beauty haul that I placed with Beautylish a couple of weeks ago. All my thoughts and all my testing is done, so now I can recommend to you guys what product is worth the money or not. There's definitely some amazing products in here and some that I think you can skip on, so let's get started. The first product I wanna talk about is actually a hair oil, and this is one that I did pick up during my Sephora VIB sale haul. And this is actually the Briogeo Don't Despair Repair Hair Oil. So this is the extension of their Don't Despair Repair line. They do have a hair mask in that line that I'm obsessed with. And they decided to come out with a oil to kind of enhance the line further. You guys can see that there is a tiny rose inside this little bottle. It is so interesting, kind of reminds me of Beauty and the Beast. This also has a very distinct smell. It smells like the Don't Despair Repair hair mask with a little bit of like a roseness added to it. So it definitely smells like the mask and then when you kind of put it through your hair, you can definitely smell a hint of rose underneath. It's definitely not that strong with regards to the rose undertone, but it's there. And the consistency of this oil is what I want to talk to you guys about. It is one that of course, just like other hair oils, this one I think is very easy to put a ton of through your hair. So if you do have like fine hair or thinner hair or not as much hair, you could probably go crazy with this pretty fast. But I do like how the opening of this one is really like slowed. So you can take the cap off of this and then when you actually disperse the product out, it doesn't just pour out like a glass of water. It actually like kind of pulses out a little bit, which is nice for control. When it comes to whether or not I would repurchase this, I do think I would, but I do have favorites over it. So if like all my favorites were sold out and I was desperately in need of a hair oil, this is definitely a good option. If you're looking for a Briogeo product, I don't think this is a bad one, but I do think that some other hair oils are a little bit better for me and I'll tell you why. So this is my number one favorite hair oil and it's probably because this one is a little bit thinner yet in consistency, which means it's a bit more lightweight on my hair. As you guys can see, I have a lot of hair and my hair is really thick. So when I'm putting product in, it's important for me to have more of a lightweight feel on my hair because it really weighs it down if it's heavier. This is still a big enough difference between the two. They're both like fluid and consistency. Both of them do a good job of adding shine and decreasing frizz. But for me, the Olaplex one is just a little bit lighter weight and it's definitely noticeable given my hair is long and thick, but I still think that the Briogeo one is still fantastic. But this one just takes the cake a little bit more. As you can see, like there's very little left, but I've also had this for probably four months, four to five months easily. A little definitely goes a long way for hair oils in general, but this one just like packs the punch. It's very lightweight, but also does the job. So you don't need a ton to have a really nice result. I did mention that I had a second favorite just slightly over Briogeo as well. This is the Verb Ghost Oil. This is more of a gel, I would say. And when you kind of think about it, you think like, how could this be like lighter than the Briogeo one if it's a gel? It doesn't make sense. The reason for this one is because it's a gel, but you also don't need too much. So it feels very lightweight in the hair. It almost like it kind of absorbs into the hair and just does its job beautifully. So this is also one that is a good contender. I think that this brand is very underrated right now as well so could be a good option to check out this one if you're interested the next thing I want to talk about is the new hourglass products that I've been testing out and the first one is actually the veil setting spray this is one that was so so popular amongst you guys when I asked what you would like me to review it was definitely this guy so this is a fragrance free setting spray incredibly hard to find in the luxury category and I think it's a very good strength about this product especially those of us that are kind of being more cautious about that kind of thing this is an amazing amazing setting spray I do find that my makeup does last really really well with this one I'm gonna be honest with you I wouldn't say that it lasts longer than the Mac fix plus for instance or other setting sprays that I've loved in the past it doesn't make my makeup last exceptionally longer than the competitors because of the fragrance free component this makes me want to use it more because I am someone that is trying to avoid that so this is so, so nice. The mister is really nice and lightweight. When you first start, it of course has a little bit of like a watery kind of like, 
like bleh, at the beginning, <laughs> like all setting sprays do. But it's really nice and airy. It has like a gorgeous, slightly cooling sensation. This one it says to hold 10 inches from the face, which I would say is definitely accurate about this thing. You don't have to go super close, even though the sprayer on this is really, really lightweight. Next, let's talk about the eye primer. And I do have a couple like tips for this one because this one is a good product as well, but I do think there's some things that kind of you need to make sure you're doing in order to really optimize its use. This is the Hourglass Veil Eye Primer, like the basically official name of this primer. And basically I was trying to see how this little guy would compare to my Holy Grail, which is my Smashbox one. I'll just show you guys this one. This is the Smashbox 24 hour eye primer. So good, very underrated. I've been using this for such a long time. Has a slight pale pink color, similar to the Hourglass actually. So both of them have that quality. This one though is a little bit more moussey than the Hourglass. The Hourglass is more of a cream. This one is more of like a lightweight mousse kind of feeling, if that makes sense. I find with my Smashbox one that I use it set and it actually dries faster than the Hourglass one does. The Hourglass one takes a little bit longer to truly set if you set it with powder before it dries. Trust me when I say it's not the best idea. It does make your eyeshadow very patchy because it's clinging on to parts that are still kind of wet and it's just an uneven surface across the board. So this one, you'll be surprised. It takes a little bit longer to set, but once it does, it's amazing. You don't have to set it with powder. It's just kind of a preference thing. It works well either way. So if you want to let it completely dry without powder or you want to let it completely dry and set it with powder, it's really up to you. But this one, I think the key is to make sure that you let it dry. And it is surprising how long it dries compared to other favorites of mine, like this one. Next, let's talk about the palette that I just picked up in my Sephora haul. This is the Urban Decay Naked Palette, Naked Heat Palette, sorry. And this is a very nice palette, I will say. I absolutely love the color story of this. I think it's fantastic. Very smoky, there's some everyday shades in there. I am wearing just one shade on my lid today. It is scorched that I'm wearing today, like all over the lid, very easy to apply. These are very nice beginner friendly shadows, I would say. They do pack some nice pigmentation. They're fantastic to work with. I will say though, especially with the shimmers, you can expect some fallout depending on how many layers you put on your lid. Expect a decent amount. This is not something that is just like a little bit of light fallout. I did find after applying about two layers of the shadow to my lids that I had significant fallout. And because it's kind of like a red pigment, I was very, very happy that I didn't have my foundation on already because that would be a nightmare to try to remove. So just so you guys know, <laughs> definitely do your eyes first with this one, but I do think they're very user friendly. Just make sure that you're ready for the fallout cleanup. Next, I want to talk about the Wayne Goss lip products that I did pick up. I picked up one of each in my Beautylish haul and I was super excited to receive it because when a fellow creator does a project of their own, like a makeup project, I love it and I really try to support it. So congrats to Wayne for this. When it comes to packaging, it is something that is just a personal preference for me, but this is a very lightweight packaging. It's like a lightweight plastic packaging with a bit of a gloss kind of over top of it. It is sleek and really, really nice, but just given my personal preference with lipsticks, I prefer a weightier lipstick when it comes to the luxury category, but literally that's just a preference thing, me being nitpicky. If you guys are not like crazy about the heaviness of packaging, it doesn't, it's not gonna matter to you, but I'm just trying to tell you from a very honest, personal perspective. I like the Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks that have a bit of weight to them. I like the Pat McGrath lipsticks that have weight to them. The NARS Audacious lipstick that I'm about to talk to you guys about has a weightiness to it, and it just kind of signifies more of a luxury experience, in my opinion. But the lightweightness of this is just goes to show the ease of use is gonna be better because it doesn't feel as heavy in the hand. So that's another thing to think about. You can think about both pros and cons with that. First, I'll talk about the lipstick. The shade that I picked up is Lily. Lily is extremely creamy, very, very beautiful, kind of classic pinky nude. And this is a shade that is definitely a Jenna shade. I know when I picked it up, you guys absolutely loved seeing it on me and seeing it swatched like this. You guys can see it's a beautiful rose kind of color. I love it. This is sort of like a little bit more rosy than my actual lip pigment. So for me, it's pretty easy to wear because I can reapply it pretty blindly and not have to worry about being super perfect about it. When I have a lipstick that's either a little lighter than my pigment or a little darker, you kind of have to make sure you got a mirror in front of you, right? But this is 
amazing. The ease of use is fantastic. I have absolutely no qualms about the formula. Incredibly creamy, very pigmented upon like one swipe. You just need like one to two on your lips. Fantastic. And I do find because of the creaminess, you can expect it to move a little bit throughout the day, but it's not as bad as I thought it would be. Because of how creamy and comfortable it is, I was like, I'm gonna expect a huge mess. Like that's just the first thing I thought of was like, I'm gonna have lipstick all over my face. But it's actually really, really nice, you guys. Like it doesn't move that much. In order to make the lipstick last a little bit longer, this is just like a common knowledge kind of thing, but putting a lip liner underneath it is fantastic and that just kind of helps if you would like to do that. It is an extra step, of course, but for me, I found that the lipstick on its own was still fairly okay with longevity. But if you want a little bit more, definitely get a lip liner with it. The lip liners that he has are fantastic. They remind me of a pencil crayon back in school a little bit, just on like how like sharp and precise it is with like, you know, the edging around the lip liner just reminds me of like a pencil crayon basically. But this is fantastic. It has a little bit more stiffness to it than I would say Charlotte Tilbury or Jouer ones that I've had in the past. They're a little bit stiffer. And for me, I have like creasing in my lips sort of. So when I'm kind of dragging this across my lips, I can tell it's stiffer. But what you get with stiffness, you actually benefit from with this product for longevity because this lip liner lasts quite a long time. I'm very, very impressed with this. I feel like if you are a lip liner person, you would definitely love this. I am someone that would kind of lazy out a little bit and not do a lip liner step, which is why I literally own like three lip liners in my entire collection. I'm just not a lip liner person. Like I don't think to do it and so I don't use them a ton, which is why I don't buy them a ton. But I think this is an amazing lip liner as well. If you're interested and you're into those types of things, the longevity is fantastic and it really helps back up the color on your lips when you choose one of the creamy lipsticks over top. Now let's talk about this lip gloss, which is the last product in his lip collection right now. The shade that I picked up is Cherry Blossom. This is more of a peachy pink. This is the lip gloss I'm wearing today in addition to the lip liner underneath. So I do have these two together on my lips right now and it's awesome. <laughs> it's definitely a nice carefree lip combo. Very easy to apply. The lip gloss as well, because it's such an everyday friendly shade for me, it's also one that you can just like throw on really, really fast and have an elegant look. This has a minty kind of smell to it. So just keep that in mind. And the doe foot is incredibly soft. I will say with regards to the wand, it's a stiffer wand, which is good. Some people like more of a flexier wand. I don't because I don't like when it's not like structured in my hand. So I prefer like doe foots that look like this where they're a little bit more stiffer and a little bit more short, but the actual doe foot itself is very spongy and bouncy and you can apply the lip gloss very, very easily. I'm gonna swatch this little lip gloss next to the lipsticks. So you can kind of see what I'm talking about. They definitely work together. They're not the same tone exactly. Like obviously the lip gloss is a bit more peachy, but they work together. I have worn them all three as well when I've been like extra bougie and it's a fantastic layering trio. I love it. I should probably swatch the liner right beside because I haven't done that. This is natural berry. I think it's perfect with Lily and the cherry blossom gloss. So here's the lip liner. You can see it matches Lily very, very close. All right, the next thing I wanna talk about is my review on a Good Molecules product. This was something that was sent to me in PR, but once again, this is always my honest opinion and I'm going to not hold back with this one because this one I am very, very excited to have discovered. I am not one that thinks that you need a physical exfoliant in your routine. I actually think that that is very much an additional step and something that I don't think a ton of people really need in their routine, if I'm honest. Like a physical scrub, a lot of the time they can be really, really harsh, but this is one that I would recommend to you guys if you are into a physical exfoliation from time to time, but do know even though this one is as good as it is, I would still recommend only doing something like that, like no more than two times a week because it is still putting your skin through quite a lot. Chemical exfoliants like AHA, BHAs, and those types of active serums are my still favorite and preferred way to exfoliate. But when I feel kind of like grimy, is that the word? <laughs> like when you can kind of feel almost your pores coming on your nose, like you can almost feel them because they're so like, I don't know, it's hard to explain, but when you kind of feel a little grimy and you really want to just clean everything out, the chemical exfoliants in your mind are like, eh, it's not gonna cut it. This is something I would 100% recommend in very 
regulated amounts, which is one to two times a week. This is the pineapple exfoliating powder from Good Molecules. This has the active ingredients of the pineapple and the papaya, similar to the active ingredients in the Wishful Scrub from Huda Beauty, except there's no fragrance in this thing, and I would highly, highly recommend this one over the Wishful Scrub. The Wishful Scrub has essential oils and fragrance in it, and even though I did get a lot of flack from some strangers on the internet, basically, saying that you really need to test it out before you have an opinion, blah, 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 I look at ingredient lists and if there's a fragrance product in it, I don't wanna put it on my face. I don't have to test it to know it's not for me. This is similar if you've ever tried the Tatcha rice powder, like that type of kind of situation. You put a little bit of the product in your hand, you mix it with some water, rub your hands together, and you have a little bit of a light lather. And that's what you apply to the face. You do still need to be gentle. This is a physical exfoliant, of course, so you don't have to go to town on your face. But a gentle scrub with this guy, I don't think is a bad thing for your skin because it really does give you that nice like clean feeling and as long as it's used sparingly of course because this isn't an everyday product definitely not next I want to update you guys on the Glossier products that I did test out and I hauled about a couple of weeks ago now if not a month ago it was definitely a while ago and I actually put a couple of those products in my favorites already for April. So if you didn't see that video, I did highlight a few of those, but the other products that I've now finished testing, I will talk about today. So the first one, I have been actually getting a ton of questions about this to really review and follow up on this guy. This is the Glossier Perfecting Skin Tint. This is really, really nice, you guys. Very, very lightweight on the skin. I actually think it's a perfect like summer base product. I do think if you have redness or acne scars or things like that, you'll want to use a concealer underneath it just because it is a sheer to light coverage. I would say definitely more on the sheer side, but can be built up a little bit to light, but you really can't layer too, too much of this. Like it doesn't have the capacity to build up to a medium. So this is a fantastic lightweight product. It comes in a dropper format, so be careful. It can come out fast at times. But how I use this one is I shake it and I actually use my hands. I make sure that my hands are nice and clean. I do pour a little bit into a couple of fingertips, like squeeze out a couple of drops and just kind of massage it into my skin as if I was applying a moisturizer. And then when it comes to like my chin area that has some kind of very light hyperpigmentation from old acne, I will kind of basically use a concealer before I apply this, or if I feel like I don't really care that day that it shows a little bit, I'll just put a little bit extra in there, but it still does show through. Like, just keep in mind, this is a sheer product. If you are going to be using this perfecting skin tint with the Future Dew, which I also really, really love, I'd be careful with how much Future Dew you put on because Future Dew is a really beautiful, glowy kind of priming serum. This <laughs> has a bit of its glow, has a bit of a glow itself. So if you pair them together, you can get pretty shiny really quickly with the glow. It's almost like a disco ball, a little bit too much. So either don't use it with the Future Dew or really go lightweight with the Future Dew because it has a really nice dewy, like glowy sheen to the skin on its own. The shade that I have is G10. I think it's a fantastic match. This is just something that I'm really, really happy that I discovered from Glossier. The next Glossier product is actually this cloud paint. These are their liquid or cream blushes. Wow, you guys, really, really beautiful on the skin, but I must say you need next to nothing, absolutely next to nothing to apply this to the cheek. Almost when you push it out, even like a tiny bit, it's too much. Like you need to have a little bit of a learning curve to kind of figure out exactly how little to push this product out. This product, you guys, is going to last me forever. <laughs> I actually think that, like this might last me my entire life. I don't know, hard to say. This is the shade Dusk, so it's a really beautiful, pale, kind of brownie pink. Really natural for sure. I'm interested in trying out the other shades because those were really beautiful and natural too. And I do like the fact that it's a cream product that applies very effortlessly. It blends out really well, either with a fingertip, you could use a beauty blender, but a lot of the Glossier products are very hands-on. So you don't really need a ton of tools, to be honest with you. You can really blend it out with a couple of fingers and it looks beautifully natural. So this I really, really like as well. We do have two more Glossier products to talk about. Then we're going on to Gucci and Tarte. So there's still a little bit more to talk about. So hopefully you're still with me. I'm gonna take a drink of my favorite Starbucks drink right now because I'm, I almost feel like I just need a talking break even. <laughs> 
This is the iced peach green tea lemonade. Very sweet with the original recipe. So if you have a sweet tooth, I'm sure you'll love it. But this is very much like fuzzy peaches to me in a beverage. It's amazing. Anyways, going on to the next Glossier product. This is the Boy Brow, which is essentially the brow product they have in their line. It comes with a spoolie and some pigment and essentially you can thicken up your brows or make them a little bolder by adding some pigment through the spoolie by brushing out your eyebrow hairs basically. Now I will say that this shade for me, I'm in the shade brown, I think. Yep, I picked brown. This is a cooler brown shade compared to my one that I use a ton, which is the Benefit Give Me Gimme Brow. I was gonna say Give Me Brow, but it's really Gimme Brow. And that one is a little bit of a warmer brown that I use, so I wasn't quite used to that, but the coolness is just slight. So it's still a shade that I can work with and something that I've been using a lot. I will say with this one, this one is more of a formula that you can really thicken up your brows pretty fast. I think the Benefit one is a little bit more forgiving, probably because the bristles, like the space in between the bristles of the Benefit one seems to be a little wider, like just a little bit. So like it doesn't apply as much product in one stroke versus the glossy one are a little bit packed a tiny bit tighter. So you get a ton of pigment in just one stroke. Just start at like the tail of your brow and then kind of work towards the front. If you want to keep this kind of fluffier, make sure that you're getting mo most of the pigment in the back. I would say with regards to formula that this one feels also a little heavier, a little denser kind of in texture compared to Benefit. I do think both products are amazing. They both keep your eyebrows in place. I think they're on par with that. So it's just going to depend on I guess the shade that you're wanting, whether you want a warmer tone or a cooler tone, and then just making sure that when you're applying this guy, you're not overdoing it too, too much because it's a little bit easier with the Glossier. The last Glossier product to talk about is actually their Stretch Concealer. I've heard amazing things about this one, and the shade that I got is G11. This is slightly lighter for me than the foundation. So the foundation is probably more of a closer match, a G10. G11 is just a little bit lighter. So I would say that this concealer works really well wherever you place it. I am not one that places concealer under my eyes as much yet, but I did test it there for review purposes. And I did find that this one is really lightweight. It sets really well. I think that this one, you know, you put it underneath your eye, it helps brighten because the shade that I have is G11, which is a little bit lighter. I actually think if you're, if you're wanting this concealer for that purpose, then you should go for something that's a little bit lighter, right? But if you're wanting just to conceal stuff <laughs> like pimples and stuff, then try to match obviously to your foundation. Don't go too, too much lighter, but because this one's a little bit lighter, I did end up putting it before any base product, so underneath, so I could cover it up with foundation. So that way it was a little bit easier to work with. It does do a great job of covering acne too. That is something I wanted to also let you guys know. Kind of reminds me of like a paint pot. It's just really like it's glass, so it's nice and bougie and yeah, I think it's gonna, like I really have barely touched it and I've been testing it for some time. That's the one thing I've noticed about Glossier products is that they are very long lasting. Like you have one product like the Cloud Paint for instance and you have it for a year basically. <laughs> Now let's talk about Gucci. So I actually had two new purchases from the Gucci makeup line. And the first one is a powder with the most beautiful compact I think I have ever, ever seen. It is so stunning. I'm about to show you guys. Look at this. Pale pink beauty. <laughs> It's so nice. Like it's got a gold rim with a little bit of like, what's that? Okay, I'm gonna show you on the mic here. So that's like, it's got like more of like a ribbed, a ribbed texture. Like look, they did not spare any expense designing this guy, I'm telling you. You can tell it's a luxury brand when, right? The fragrance on this guy, pretty strong, <laughs> as you probably would have guessed. So this is a powder that I don't use every day because of that but this is a really good match for me actually. I would say that it's like, if I'm being completely nitpicky, it's slightly dark, just slightly. So I probably would go for shade three next time because I'm shade four in this. But beautiful, beautiful, beautiful powder. It sets really beautifully. The fragrance though is definitely distinct. And I would say like it does dissipate on the skin once it's been on the skin for a few minutes, but when you're applying it, you can smell it. When you pick it up with your brush, you can smell it. When you open up the compact, like you don't have to go very far. You're already right here and I can smell it. So 
it's definitely strong, but <laughs> I'm in love with it. I hate that I'm in love with it. They need to just take the dang fragrance out of it. <laughs> It gives you a nice soft matte finish and you guys know I'm not really like a super matte finish kind of girl so I like a soft matte but that's really where I'll go when it comes to like matteness. But this is definitely something that is a bougie splurge and one that I don't think you'll regret. Next let's talk about the mascara. This is like the same kind of packaging but you can see like oh it's so bougie. <laughs> it's so nice. Really really beautiful mascara. Very weighty in the hand. A soft pink base here with like the cap is gold with like that same ribbed kind of texture to it. This is a very interesting mascara because of the wand. So I'm going to show you guys the wand. I'm going to see if it'll focus. Can you guys kind of see that? It's very short bristled, similar to the Chanel volume to Chanel, except it's very, very short, like even shorter than that. It's tapered at the top and the bottom. You can see like the widest part is in the middle. This doesn't smell like anything, thank goodness. So if you're wanting to treat yourself, but fragrance is just a no go. The mascara is definitely one to think about. Now I will tell you guys something about this. As you guys know, I am a love of mascara. I like to wear lots of layers of it. Some people don't think it's their cup of tea. That's okay, but I love mascara. <laughs> this one is very good at separating your lashes and giving you a very natural glam. It's really hard to explain because when you build this one up, you almost cannot build it up to thicken the lash as much, if that makes sense. It stays very much like nice and separating, gives you that black kind of edge to your lash, but it doesn't give you a thickening component as easily as some other ones. Because the bristles are so small, you end up having the most density at the base when you kind of like, sh you know, move the mascara wand upward. The base or closer to the eyelid is where it has the most denseness. And then it kind of like separates as it pulls forward through your lash. So it's lovely, but I think that it's more of, it's more of a natural mascara than I thought it was. Like the look is very natural. So even today I put this on and then because I knew it was going to be filming, I put a little bit of the Tarte La Lights Camera lashes over top of it because I just wanted a little bit more thickness and more boldness to the lash. It's very, very hard to build this one up to look chunky though, which is a good thing. So if you are someone that really struggles with putting too much on, it looks like all your lashes are stuck together. It's harder to do that with this one, I think because of the wand, essentially. So if you're wanting more of a natural mascara, more separation, slight boldness, definitely lengthens a little bit too, but you'll see that it's a natural glam look, which is a welcomed change as well. Okay, now let's talk about the Tarte Cream Bronzer. I did do a dupe video with this guy and I compared it to the Chanel Soleil de Tan or the original one, not the one that's out now, but the discontinued version because I got a ton of questions and some statements from you guys that this was a perfect dupe. It is not in shade. The Tarte one is actually cooler than the Chanel. But I think that when it's blended into the skin, it's close. Like it looks pretty close when I was wearing the Chanel one and the Tarte one in that video. I could tell like just looking in natural light and stuff that like you couldn't really tell the difference because they were both blended into the skin. It's very slight, but it was slight enough for my husband to pick out this side which had the Tarte over the Chanel side. So goes to show that I guess his eye was more gravitated towards the cooler shade, even though it was slight. But when it comes to consistency of product and the performance, this is amazing, just like the Chanel. It has beautiful pigmentation. It's very easy to blend out. I actually use it with a beauty blender just to make it really easy. I love this one. It lasts a long time too. It's good. I mean, I'm not a cream person, so for me to say that is kind of impressive. <laughs> And I love the like aesthetic of the packaging. It's like a mint green. My lights are pulling more blue, but it's actually more of a seafoam green in real life. We are on to the final stretch. This is the last product <laughs> that I'm gonna talk about in today's video. Definitely tons of hits and misses that we've gone through. This is the NARS Audacious Lipstick. I did tell you I would come back to this one. The shade that I picked up is Anita. So this is the shade here. Very, very beautiful. I think that it is a perfect Jenna shade as well. You know what? I want to see how it compares to Lily because it looks close. <laughs> it looks close. But anyways, the Audacious Lipstick, while I'm kind of preparing these swatches, is more of a, it's creamy, but it's more of a slight matte. Anita's on the left. So you can see they're really, really similar. 
<laughs> but anyways, with regards to pigmentation, one swipe in this lipstick has gotten highly, highly pigmented already. Like the pigmentation is fantastic on these. Very comfortable on the lips as well. But like I said, a slight matteness, a slight stiffness to the formula versus let's say a creamy one like the Wayne Goss. What is something that you want me to review for a future video? I would love to know your thoughts down below. It is my birthday in a couple of days, Saturday, May 30th. So I'm excited. I do want to place an order. So if you have a product request, leave it in the comments below. Until my next one, guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope you're staying safe. Bye guys. You and me, everything that we've been through has made us strong. You won't believe we've had our great But sorry, there's a light inside of us It's just the way